So we're not going to have no game at all. Come on. Well, there you are. It's about time you were getting here. And just look at you. My, my. Don't you want to get ready for your father's birthday? You know, he comes once a year. Well, I'll only really have a little fun. Only having a little fun. Well, now you go over there and have some fun with that soap and water. All right. Don't you think your father wants a little pleasure with his children after a hard day's work at the foundry? He can't unless you clean up a little. Now, here, you take that soap and water and wash well behind your ears. Yes, now, here. Well, now, let me look at you. Come on, stand up here a little bit. That's it, girlie. Well, I'm certainly glad you kept yourself clean. Well, I like the birthday cake for Daddy. Yeah. Isn't that pretty? Yes. Wait a minute. Let me have it now. Let me look at you. Oh, you have something to look at. With you all cleaned up, you'll be as big a surprise to your father as his birthday cake. Mama, you always look the same to me. Beautiful. Oh, you're more like your dad every day. You flatter us. <laughs> you don't talk much. When you do, you say something. Good evening. Uh, what's the matter? Jeff got hurt. He was hurrying home. A heavy casting fell off the Kevir. Oh. Where's Jeff from? Uh, in there. Better you don't look, Mrs. Thomas. Bring him in, boys. Awfully sorry, Nora. You've got to pull yourself together. He needs you now more than ever. I don't think Jeff will ever walk again. Dr. Bowden will be right here. Dad, is Mr. Thomas her bed? I haven't seen him yet, Mary. Come along. You better stay around in case I need something. You boys better go now. There's nothing else that you can do. Thanks. children better go outside. It's all right. Dr. Bowden and your mama will get everything fixed up. Come on, Mary. You're coming with me, honey. John, I'm so sorry about your daddy. I don't think I'm going to school anymore. What would my daddy say? He's always talked to you about that. You have to go to school. I know, but I just can't. You must. I said that my daddy's never going to walk again. Who's going to take care of mama? I just got to work. I wouldn't feel so bad, mother. Joe ain't leaving us forever. But he's never been away from us before. And he's going such a long way. Well, Joe's worked ever since I've been hurt. And he's going away because he feels he'll have a better chance to make something out of his set.
Come in. Hello, Mary. Mary. Hello, Jerry. Come in, Doctor. How are you? Oh, just spare the middling. There's nothing professional about this visit, Jefferson. Only one of Mary's ideas. Joe hasn't gone yet, has he, Uncle Jim? Well, I don't... You don't think he'd go without saying goodbye to you, do you, Mary? <laughs> hello, have you got my sock? Oh, hello. Joe! You bought a new suit. Yeah, I sure did. <laughs> I thought this was an unprofessional visit. But I diagnosed two severe cases of heart trouble. <laughs> I prescribe um, a long walk in the open air. I <laughs> said, I'm sure Joe would have never suggested it. You heard what the doctor ordered. Come along. <laughs> I wish you weren't going away tonight. We're going to miss you, Joe. I'm going to miss you too, Mary. It's going to be lonesome here without you, Joe. This has been our spot for a long time. That isn't much change for me around here, Mary. Oh, I understand. There'll be more of an opportunity where you're going. You must have a chance to do big things. You deserve it, Joe. I know you'll make good. I hope so. I want to get ahead and be somebody, and do things for Mama and Papa, and for you too, Mary. I wonder where Joe is now. Far away, I expect. Trains move fast. Oh, Eleanor, child, you forgot the cream pitcher. <laughs> you and Mary will be soon going back to school, too. Dear Mama, what's for you? Dear Mama, this money is all for you and for Pop. Don't worry, Joe. All his money, all his savings. How is he ever going to get where he's going? Brothers of that Lord sure do themselves good. I'm gonna join me in one of these societies just as soon as I get me some initiation fees. Sir, where's you from? From Birmingham. My mother's got a sister down there. Uh, what are you doing there? Looking for work. Wait. <laughs> Boy, you got it too. Massage and dish. What's your name? Joe Thomas. Crazy Fitz Gibbons, my name. They call me Cricket for short. Sure. How you doing? Fine. Pleased to meet you. Come here. Won't you take a look?
Well, you you looking for a job, huh? Well, in the morning, me and you is going out and get us a man-sized job. Because we done lost this one right now. How do you like your job, Joe? I like it all right. But what I like about it is my pay envelope when it comes in regular. <laughs> this is the longest job I ever did have. <laughs> You've been getting in my way now for a long time. Say, hey, you shouldn't pick on a little fellow like that. Well, maybe you think you're big enough. I'm not looking for a fight. Oh, no? What's going on here? Huh. Fighting, eh? You know we don't tolerate that around here. Go get your time. Go on. I'm sorry that I made you lose your job, Joe. And I know you need it, too. With your pa just passing along, and your mother coming and everything. It wasn't your fault. Well, listen, there's a whole lot of jobs around here, and we gonna get us a couple of them, too. Any left? No. Uh, do your mother still like the big city? She likes it all right, but I've got to get a job. Well, I've been talking to the man that owned this car. Now, I got an idea that you can do something for him, and he can do something for you. Well, come on there, Cricket. Now, I do, Mr. Walman. The car's all right there. Uh, look, Mr. Walman, uh, this is the boy that I was telling you about. Yeah, I know, but I, I'm kind of busy now. Uh, now, wait a minute, Mr. Walman. He's got dynamite in that right hand of his. You ought to see it. No, okay, Cricket, but I've got to get away. Uh... Joe, go on and show him what you can do. One blow, Mr. Walman, and it was terrific. <laughs> okay, Cricket. Well, listen, I've got some very important letters to dictate. Yeah, we'll just make you feel better, huh? Thank you, sir. Good. Uh, glad to have seen you. Excuse me. Nice man, ain't he? Now, one of these we's gonna eat on, and the other one we's gonna invest. Ha! Come on, let's go eat. Why you belong. Why you could carry on for Joe Gann, Joe Walcott, Sam Lang, and Jack Blackburn and all of them. Now that's something for you to shoot at. And you can do it. You can make your people proud of you.
shine round my door. I want to sing, I want to shout and tell the world what it's all about. I got a song, a garden full of pretty flowers. When things go wrong, I talk it over with the flowers. I got a How you like this? Don't be scared. Come on. That's all right, waiter. Uh, Mr. Franklin Walton told us to meet him here. He's expecting us. You keep on asking, am I blue or soft? Hello, dude. Hello, boys. That's Duke Emerald. He's a big sporting man. He owns this place. Yeah. Oh. Excuse me. Certainly. Good, Mr. Walburn. Why? My usual, Jim. I'll take the same. Oh, no, not you. See, he don't drink nothing but milk, except times he drinks orange juice. Good. I hope you don't ever change that order, son. I guess I won't. You know, you made a fine record at the gloves contest. You figured on staying in the fight game? I think maybe. Mm. I like to handle you. I told you he could do it, didn't I, Mr. Walburn? You remember that day? Oh, yes, Ricky. I've got to thank you for telling me about Joe. And if we should ever get together, maybe someday Joe can thank you. But you can go right straight to the top, son. Fame, success, and money. Everything you want there. I'm sorry I can't say yes, but I've got to talk it over. Whenever you say, I... I mean, I've got to talk it over with my mother. Tell her that you and me can go a long way, son. Hello, Mama. I've been talking to a big fighting manager. He wants me to keep on fighting. What do you think? Well, I think he got the right idea. But I said, first I have to talk it over with you. That's right, Joe. That's right. There ain't no sin in fighting. Except if you don't fight fair, you know. It's not what you do is a sin. It's how you do it. You go on, Joe. If fighting's your business, only be honest and fair, that's all. Whether you win or you lose, it's no shame to lose when you do your best. But don't ever bring disgrace on your family. I promise you that, Mama. semifinal? Good. Yeah, and I want the boy to get plenty of billing. Yeah. Uh, all right, Eddie, then I'll run in tomorrow and... Oh, no, ain't gonna be any difficulty about terms. You know the boy's terms, so don't start on your chiseling. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay. All right, Eddie. See you tomorrow. Uh -huh. Oh, hello, Flora. I know you ain't coming in here now and start to kid me and tell me you're falling for me, huh? Joe's coming along all right, isn't he? Oh, fine. Four knockouts, one coming up next week. Hey, just where are you heading in with that boy? What do you think? I don't know what I think. I know a boy coming up can't make it on bright lights. Going up, on top, or coming down, Frankie? Don't forget, they're all human. I don't want you to go ahead taking advantage of that boy. Hold your advice, Frankie. You may try to run his life, but you can't run mine. Hello, Joe. Hello, Flora. I was just telling Frankie, I think you've got something. Thanks, Flora. Hi, Phil, Joe. Fine. You booked with Langley at the Arcadia next week. In the semifinals, boy. We've been at dinner, I bet, Frankie. I've missed you at the Bluebird, Joe. You've been busy training, Flora. Can't you drop in for a while tonight, Joe? I have a new song I want you to hear. Thanks, Flora, but I'm afraid. I know. While you're in the middle of training. I wouldn't want you to do that. But after you've won your next fight. Sure, Frank and I would drop in. I do want you to hear my new song. So long, Frankie. Yeah. I'm holding a good thought for you that you'll win. Eleanor! Oh, Mother! Oh, well, Mary Bowden! Oh, dear, I'm so glad to see you. My, my. I'm so happy to be home, Mother. And won't Joe be surprised? Why, we didn't expect you for another week. Dad said I could come along with Eleanor and stay with you for a while, if it's all right. Why, of course it is, child. <laughs> no, we didn't lose any time. No. <laughs> you know why Mary heard me home, Mother. <laughs> come on, Mary, let's go put our things up. <laughs> Call up the minute Joe comes home. I home. will. Won't he be surprised? From Joe. From Joe? Sure. Out of some of the money we made betting on you. And there'll be plenty more.
Jerry follows him up and sinks the right to Joe's body. A left to Joe's head. Another left to Joe's head. That's one hurt. He seems to have Joe on the run. Terry is pounding Joe with lefts and rights. He has Joe wobbling. He's watching for an opening for a haymaker. He doesn't give Joe time to cover up. Uh, don't turn it off, Miller. Terry Griffin is in with a left to the head. A right to Joe's body. Joe Thomas is covering. What a fight Terry is putting up. He's been carrying the fight from the start. He gets in with another left. Terry's ribs. Oh, that hurt. Joe follows it up. Sends a left to the head. Another left. Terry doesn't make a return. Oh, there it is. Terry's against the ropes, trying to cover up. Joe keeps driving into the body. <laughs> Terry is still on the floor. The referee begins to count. Shut that thing off. Ira? Come here. The odds on that boy are getting awful short. You win. But what do you win? If he should lose, there would be a chance to make some real money. But Joe can't lose. Oh, no. Funny things happen. Have you heard anything from Joe? Not a word. Ain't like that chappy to slack up in his training like this. These last few weeks have been... Well, I know. I'm getting word. See you at dinner tonight, Joe? I'll be there. Boy's been waiting for you. I'll be going still if I don't lay off once in a while. This man Bob and his bad medicine. You ask him for trouble if you don't keep right on working. I'm in good shape. I got to relax a little. So you're bending over backwards with this relaxing business. Trouble with you, everybody's telling your sis to win, you begin to believe it. I'll win that fight. That's all you got to worry about. All right, Joe. You and me have done then. We'll talk it over. Aren't you going to Duke's Diner tonight? I guess they forgot to send Speedy and me an invitation. Joe, you can't keep going around every other night, going to dances and running around with Flora. Keep her out of here. You brought her into so it. So what? Nothing at all. I make a motion that we defer all eulogisms until we have done full justice to this beautiful repast which Mrs. Johnson has furnished in our honor. While we are here to honor our Joe. I want Joe to stand up and say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. This is all being over. Let's proceed to eat. Join yourself, Joe? Great. I'm proud of you, Joe. Oh, it's a break for you to get away from the grind of training. For my part, I think that a lot of training is a waste of time. You're always in a trim condition. What's it all worth if you can't get a little fun out of life? Mother, we're worried about Joe. He's slacked up in his training. What? Well, I'll just give him a good licking. He'll never get too big for me to handle. Well, that's all right, Mrs. Thomas. Well, I, I wouldn't have worried you about it, but I know you both love Joe. Well, I've loved Joe ever since I can remember. What do you think we can do? Tell you the truth, I don't know exactly. But somewhere, somehow, we've got to find a way. Perhaps I know a way. Well, I think I understand. But Mary, she's a smart woman you're thinking about. Oh, I can try.
Shall we dance, Laura? You know, entertainers aren't allowed to dance. You? There's ugly rumors going around that you're betting heavy against Joe. Frankie, right, you're not beginning to believe rumors, are you? Well, I'd hate to think what would happen if it should ever get to Joe's ears. Why, Joe wouldn't believe a thing like that. I'm his friend. Oh, you're his friend. And then you like him, huh? I sure do. There you ought to. He's done you plenty good. Well, if you're his friend, you ought to do something for him. Done plenty for you. Your bankroll. Frankie, just now I like you. You're a nice guy. And you're supposed to be a smart manager. Meaning what? That you should be smart enough not try and tell me how to run my business. Do you get that, Frankie? You mean I run my business and you run yours? Gee, you are smart. Joe is my business. Joe is your business. <laughs> and don't you forget that. Excuse me, Joe. I have to change now for my next number. See you later. How did you get in here? I'm Mary Bowden. I wanted to see you alone. Oh, I see. Joe told me about you. Won't you sit down? I can understand a little better now. What do you understand? Oh, about Joe. You are an attractive girl. What do you want to see me about? I wondered if you realize what you're doing to Joe. Helping him to find a little enjoyment and happiness. And helping him to bring his career to an end. You know he can't keep on finding that sort of happiness. And then go in the ring fit to do his best. 
Why come and tell me about it? Because I think you're the only one that can help him. I suppose you want me to give him up so you can have him. You can't give him to me any more than you can take away what Joe and I have meant to each other ever since we were children. Then what do you want? I want you to realize what you're doing to his career. Joe means a great deal to me, whether I'm with him or away from him. I've loved him all my life. And now, I've said all I've come here to say. You love Joe. I know you'll understand. Well, Mary. I don't know, Frankie. I think he's in love with her. Oh. Sure, you won't change your mind, Mary. No, Mother. Thank you. In some ways, that boy just no count. He's so blind he can't see no farther than his own nose. No, Mother. I'm sure he knows what he wants. 
You won't even stay and say goodbye to him, Mary? You say it for me. He'll understand. Know the rules. Give me a good king cut fight. Protect yourself at all times and faces. Shake hands, come out of the corner fighting. That's all right, Joe. Why don't the boys will take care of that? Let you and I go out and have something to eat. Walden just come in, looking for me. Two specials. Coffee for me and milk for him. He 
right back. I mean, a joke at the telephone. He knows I can still fight with the best of them. Hey, that was Frankie Walden, wasn't it? And you're his partner. No, I'm one of his fighters. Frankie always listens to his partners. You tell him I'm okay. I still got the old punch. I can knock him over like I always did. You tell Frankie that. He'll believe you. You're his partner. I'm still as good as I ever was. They think I'm through. They think I can't take it. <laughs> they don't know. Say, what time is it? I think, I think I've got somewhere to go. I, I just can't remember. Oh. Don't forget to tell him. I still pack that old knockout punch. Hello, Tommy. Hello, Frankie. Hey, how about me? Oh. I see. Who was that? That was Tommy Wright. He was a comma once. I used to handle him. He was a train. Thought he didn't have to. Too bad. Took too much punishment in the ring and well, you can see for yourself. Great career thrown away. No telling what Tommy might have been if he'd gone on and... Let's eat, boy. I'm not hungry. How do you feel, son? I feel all right, Mama. No. Don't you worry about losing that fight. Tomorrow's coming, and you're going right back and start over again like a real man. Now, you're going to bed and get some rest, son. And remember, there's always tomorrow. It's the little things you do day by day. Make your troubles grow, make them a fade away. Keep on working with a smile, concentrate on things worth a while. Every little thought that comes day by day, planning and feeling for a perfect way is just little steps. That build up to your castle of dreams. Be careful how you climb day by day. If you stumble, you will tumble. And all your plans and schemes will be like dreams. And your paradise will crumble. The world will turn its back when you out and down. And 
and your so-called friends will leave you on the ground. So pay attention while you're young and gay to the little things you do. I want you boys to get together and give me a workout. A real one. Let it rain. Time? find a thing wrong with Joe's wife, but something seems to be missing. Something we can't do a thing about. Mary Bowden is the only one. Hello, Frankie. Hello, Bob. You think Joe can beat the champ, Frankie? Well, what do you think, Bob? I've seen Joe in his last four fights. I'm out of this Baldwin KO, all right. Works like a machine, no mistake. But no spark, Frankie. Maybe that doesn't worry you, as long as he keeps on winning. It does worry me. But I ain't for publication in your newspaper. I got today, Joe. I've seen you a long time. I've been training most of How's Mary? Mary's gone. You love her, don't you, Joe? Luck when you meet the champ. Thanks, before I guess I need it. Well, Joe, hands okay. Commission is satisfied. Happy? Get in there and win. See what it is. Well, here we are, gentlemen of the press. Any statement to make, Frankie? Joe's in great shape. As a favorite to win the world championship. What about a statement from Joe? The report is, Frankie, that he hasn't got his heart in the fight. Any truth in that? Yeah, how about it? Joe's got his right hand in it. That's all that Joe needs. Good evening. Cricky. Do you want Joe to win? Why, with me and Joe's corner? He can't lose. You and I can make sure of it. And don't worry about his corner. Now, this ain't another trick. You've got to trust me. 
We've got work to do. Yeah, but wait a minute now. Wait a minute. I got to be in Joe's corner because he needs me. Yes. Good, clean fight. Fight a one arm free at all times, protect yourself at all times. Shake hands, come out of your corner, fight. right to Joe's body. He backed away after that one. Stanley lands a left to the head, another right to the body. Joe tries a right and misses and connects lightly with the left. Joe back. What are you doing here? Eleanor told me you were teaching school here in New York. Do you want to do something for Joe? I don't understand. You've got to come with us. I'll explain on the way. There's no time to lose, if you love him. Oh, well, I'll be ready in a moment. This suspense is killing me. Get downstairs and get that car started and keep it running. Don't you worry about that car getting started. You get married and make it fast. That famous left jab doesn't hurt Stanley. There goes a hard right to Joe's body. You hear what that man said? Right I told he you I had to be in Joe's head. corner. Joe, you are the cause of this. They keep calling me to be late like this. Freak out! What are you hollering about, George? Y'all act like you're all scared. Don't do that.
six, seven, eight. Try to get Joe Thomas to say something. Joe, will you say a few words? It was a tough fight. I'm happy to win for more than one reason. Ah, uh, thanks, Joe. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Joe Thomas, the new world champion. <laughs> well, Joe, this is one banquet that we're both invited to, huh? <laughs> The little things you do day by day that count. Our Joe. <laughs>